You're listening to Investify, preaching financial independence and assisting investors to achieve a more flexible and free lifestyle through smart financial planning and real estate investing. If leaving the corporate world and jumping into this thriving industry is what you desire, tune in and listen to stories of like-minded individuals who made the leap to financial independence. Equip yourself with the right tips and tricks to start your real estate journey, making active or passive ventures that are highly profitable and rewarding. Here are your hosts, Craig Kerlop and Ziana McIntyre. What's going on, everybody? You are listening to Investify. My name is Craig Curlop, aka The Fi Guy, and I'm here with my co-host, Ziana McIntyre, aka Z Money. Z, how are you doing today? I'm doing so great. I'm just feeling like really excited about this guest that we have today. Um, yeah, but what is going on in my life? I'm having a great time. I'm out here in Atlanta. If anybody is looking to buy or invest in Atlanta, hit up Vince Crane. He is hosting me. And this morning I got to spend time with Ken Corsini and Anita, his wife. So I've had like a fun little tour. Mm, nice. That sounds like super fun. Except you decided to go to Atlanta, Georgia in like middle of August, which I don't know why. But, <laughs> well, I'm here hey. for a wedding, but it's actually only in the 70s. It's like a very uh, mellow week, heat-wise. Oh, so okay. I'm, I'm doing good. Nice, nice. Love that. And yeah, let's stay got... with you, Mr. Craigers. Oh, we've got we've got some stuff going on up in here. So we are building out a little farm up here in Idaho. Um, we bought a cow, which I never thought was going to happen. Um, and now <laughs> I'm working on a uh, building a chicken coop. I'm almost me and my buddy are building a chicken coop, and I'm, we're almost done. And so uh, it's a chicken mansion, chicken McMansion is what we're calling it because it's like 160 square feet. You could fit literally like a queen size bed inside where the chickens would sleep. And we're wow. thinking about maybe Airbnb it, but uh, I guess the chickens get to live not really rent free. They're giving us eggs, but um, yeah, they're not paying us any dollars, unfortunately. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, what are you gonna do with the cow? Tell me about we, this. Yeah, so we got we got we got a cow, we got a calf, and then that cow is pregnant. So we're gonna end up with like three cows here in like less than a year. And um, the idea is just to you know just get milk, cheese, yogurt. Like it's gonna produce three gallons a day, and so we're splitting it with friends. Uh, and then we're gonna sell the excess milk uh, just to some friends and family and all that for like a really discounted price because raw milk is like 20 bucks a gallon. So if we can just sell Super it for like expensive. 10. Yeah, we'll sell it for like 10 bucks a gallon and save some people some money and we'll also help offset the costs of our own milk, which we drink a lot of. Um, and then, and then you know, uh, the, the bull we're gonna raise up and then eventually butcher it and um, have like a year's worth of meat. So um, yeah. Um, wow, so you heard this first. If uh, the world ends, go to Craig Curlop's farm because he will be <laughs> fully self-sufficient. Yeah, we're getting ready. <laughs> that's that's the idea. We want to like grow and be fairly self-sufficient. Um, so that's, that's the journey of us. And, and now I feel like I want to th do my best Kool-Aid man impression and like run through a wall after talking with Jabbar today. This kid is just so full of energy. I love his story. And I say kid because he's literally a kid. He's like... I guess he's a legal adult because that's 18, but he's not even 21 yet. And he's already financially free at the age of 20. So uh, let's, let's bring him on the show. Hey everyone, big news. Investify has now partnered with Rent Ready. And yes, we've partnered with Rent Ready because that is the software system that both me and Ziana use to do property management for our rental properties. It makes things super easy. We can send applications, get background checks and credit checks. They, uh, tenants, when they come in, can pay rent automatically through there. They can submit maintenance requests, do everything you need to do for property management all in one place. That's why Rent Ready is the thing that we've done. I've been using them for years now. And that's why they're, you know, we, we reached out to them for a relationship on the show. And so, again, super excited to have them on board. If you go to rentready.com and use the code INVESTIFY, you'll get 50% off your first six months. That's right, 50% off your first six months if you go to. Uh, rentready.com, sign up and use the coupon code invest2fi. Uh, and can't wait to see you there. Let us know, you know, hit us up on Instagram, hit us up on wherever, and let us know what you think of, of Rent Ready. Because uh, again, I think it's an amazing software. I use it all the time. You can access it from your phone. Amazing stuff. So thanks so much. And let's get back to the episode. Jabbar, 
Ade Asada, welcome to the show. Did I say your last Not name? Right, even Not even close. close. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> Ade Asada. Yep. Ade Sada. Ade Sada. Yep. Ade Sada. Jabbar. I know your first name at least. Jabbar. Ade yeah. Sada. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. Uh, dude, so good to have you on, man. So good to see you again. Um, Jabbar, we, we met we met way way back, maybe like a year ago, at the Bigger Pockets thing, and it was so good to meet you. I felt like after talking to you, I was hyped, and I'm ready to get everybody else listening to this thing hyped. So why don't you tell us where you first heard about financial independence? Yeah, so I first heard about financial independence, I want to say, while I was in the military. I didn't know it was like a real concept until um, I was on training and we got hosted for the holidays because we weren't able to go home and see our families. And I saw like financial independence personified in this guy named Phil. I talk about Phil all the time. I mean, he was living like the financial independence life. He's the type of guy to go like scuba diving in the morning and like hang gliding in the afternoon. I mean, it's, it's just insane. Um, so I was getting to talk to Phil and I wanted to be a doctor when I first joined the military. That's why I joined so they can pay for school and I can pursue my education. But then after meeting Phil, I was like, I want to be like this guy because this guy's doing it right. Um, so he gave me uh, two books. I will teach you to be rich by Ramit Sethi and an automatic millionaire by David Bach. And then I read those things from cover to cover. And I think in I will teach you to be rich. He brought up the um, the I guess idea or philosophy of financial independence. And I was like, yep, that's going to be me. I'm going to be financially independent ASAP. And uh, that's kind of how it started. Okay. I love that you were going to hack education through going to the military for being a doctor. I've never heard of anybody doing that. I know that most people try to get free college through the military, but doctor, that is brilliant. So kudos to you for that. But the second thing I want to say is that I'm really surprised that Ramit or Ramit is the person that you got inspired to do five through because in his book, he only tells people to save like 10% of their income. He's kind of like one of those more traditional financial planners. And so I always thought that he was just like way, way too conservative to be like financial independence. Yeah. Yeah. So like, um, I, when I saw like Ramiz, Ramiz's book, I kind of like take everything to like the next level. So he like vaguely mm. mentioned it, I remember. And then I Googled it and then I fell down like the rabbit hole. So like it wasn't yeah. more I, like the rest of his book. It, it's a really good book. It's super conservative. I agree. But I mean, once I like saw like the, the concept, I was like, hmm, I've never heard of this before. And then you start seeing it every day, everywhere. It's like that, like Honda, like when you think about it, you just see it over and over and over again. Absolutely. <laughs> You know, one, one thing I love is that I feel like everybody's got this, like, turning point. It's like the book they read, the person they heard, and they're like, especially at, like, you know, when you're young, 18, 20, 20, you're like, you're just so malleable, and you can be on, like, one trajectory and just switch so quick because you're, you're just so early on into your trajectory. But if you were, like, eight years into your doctorate degree, it would be a lot harder to be like, actually, screw this, I'm going to go to real estate. Uh, yeah. But I... Yeah, I, I mean, I, I love that you were able to make that shift and be so malleable and not just set in stone as to what you're going to do. And so after you read Ramit's book, it sounds like, again, it sounds like you, you kind of like read between the lines and um, so, pulled out one piece and then extrapolated on that. And so like what what came next? Like what, what piece of education? Yeah, so um, I read, I was 18 at the time to like give people like chronological order of like where I was at. And that was like two years ago. Um, so then after I read Ramit's uh, book, I just like was like an and automatic millionaire. I started saving like every single penny, like in the military, like we're notorious for spending money on cars and or food and like all this crazy stuff. And I was like, no, I'm like, I was Scrooge McDuck. Like I was literally spending $50 a month while I was in training because I was literally saving and investing every penny because he said 10%. And my like logic was, well, if I bump into like 80 percent or 90 percent i can get there like like you know really Tomorrow. really quickly. yeah exactly <laughs> yeah um, and then like at the time like in the military we don't make much money i was making like um fifteen hundred dollars a month and i was investing all of that stuff into the stock market this was COVID time 2020 and um I ended up doing pretty well from that. Like, I think like the market was crashing and you know, Warren Buffett's like when you're supposed to be, when everyone's fearful, you, that's when you get greedy. So I just took that seriously, threw everything into the market. And then like the military had paid me 
at the most at that time period, uh, and this was a six month time period, maybe um, eleven or twelve thousand dollars. But in my brokerage account, because like the stock market had rebounded, I was at like twenty five thousand dollars, like just like that. Mm. So it just like broke. Like I just got that like kind of education that like this stuff is real and it works and. Um, that's kind of what got me into like thinking bigger, like how, like this 25 grand or whatever is OK. But how can I really get to like this millionaire level of what I was really yearning for? What are what are some of the ways that you were like being scrappy and saving? Right. You know, in case whether you're in the military or maybe some people not in the military can take this, uh, take some nuggets from you. But like, what were some of the ways you were doing that? Yeah, I mean, I was 18 at the time. So in the military, they pay for well, they take it out of your paycheck, so you never actually see it. So I have like my food taken care of. We wear a uniform 24 seven, so I never spent money on clothes. And I didn't really go out, honestly, if I'm gonna be real. I like stayed on base the entire time and just uh, read books and read like um, different things. So I was just like, I guess it was just like that series of like hyper focus. You know, when they say like, if you dedicate six months to anything, uh, it will change your life forever. And like that was just for me. So, um, yeah, it's just being like, I just rejected any feeling of spending. And how was that? Like, how did, I guess, like getting into like the feels a little bit, like, how did you feel being 18 years old where like fitting in is usually kind of a big deal with all your buddies going out and grabbing, I guess you guys can't drink, but grabbing smokes or whatever, whatever the heck you guys do at 18 when you go out. Yeah, can't drink. Um, but like, so but how, how did that, like, how did you feel when all your buddies were out having fun and you're like sitting inside, locked in your room, reading Automatic Millionaire? I, I, I was definitely outcasted. Like my friends would make fun of me. Everyone would make fun of me. But I've kind of been like weird my entire life. Like growing up, I was like bullied for being like the African kid because I didn't mention I'm also Nigerian. So I was big, bullied for that. And like um, I've just never fit in anywhere. So to me, it was just like, I guess I'll fit in when I'm rich. <laughs> yeah. I love you that. actually you, you will never fit in because most yeah, people are rich. I, yeah. I, I learned that now. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Okay, so you know, so you're in the military, like you're locked yourself in your dorm room, you're reading books, and I think you're just you're just seeing this this bigger picture. And so at what point are you deciding to take action? Yeah. So um I did it so when I was like doing the math on like when I will be a millionaire, I was like doing like the whole four percent rule because I was listening to a lot of uh Grand Stephan, and I was like, man, like if I invest two thousand dollars a month, and also I forgot to mention, I was not only was I saving money, but I was also side hustling. So I was doing like um, papers for other people. I was standing duty for money, and so I like trade a lot of my time for money to like generate other income. And um, so when I was when I was like doing the math, it was like two thousand dollars a month for I think like 15 years compounded at like 10%, I would be a millionaire at like 34. And I was like, you know, 18 year old kid, I was like, this is bull crap. Like, I don't want to wait that long. <laughs> and you know, you see on Instagram, everyone else is doing it like earlier, you know, the TikTok kids, they're like dancing around. Like, um, <laughs> so I'm like, how are they doing it? And so that's when I kind of like saw, uh, I like started like just looking and brainwashing myself like, Everyone who was a friend of mine, I undownloaded on social media and I just started following people who were only into like entrepreneurship, investing and everything like that, trying to like just have those conversations. And eventually by doing that, I found bigger pockets. And uh, the first episode I listened to was Todd Baldwin's episode where he talked oh, about so how one. he was renting properties by the bedroom. He was a millionaire at 25 and he was making like $13,000 a month in cash flow. And I was like, wow, this is way better than the stock market. I'm going to do that. Um, and then I listened to a couple other episodes and like one kid, he was like 20 years old, making like 750 grand a year. Or that was like the flashy, like bigger pockets title. It probably was gross. Mm -hmm. And um, he said that how I got to where I was is I started episode one of the bigger pockets podcast and I listened to all of them. So that's exactly mm -hmm. what I did. I started an episode Dang. one and listened to every <laughs> single, like I've listened to every single episode. Up to this day. There's OG like show. almost 600 now. Yeah. 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 That's, yeah. <laughs> that's nuts, dude. You know, I actually, I actually did that too. Like when I first started getting into real estate, I, I went from one all the way to present day. But I will admit, I, I'm not as badass as you, man, because I think I stopped at like 200 is when I like caught up. 
Yeah. And, I, and, then I, and then I stayed with it to like 300 and then I've totally fallen off after they started making so many damn episodes. I'm like, yeah. ah, I'm drowning. Yeah. I'm um, that way now. So. Yeah. But bro, that's, that's it though, man. Like one thing is it, that you can't hide is, is education. Right. And I can tell that you've already rattled off like eight different influencers that you follow or and, you follow. And, and that's, that's the key to success. It's just like getting educated. Z, what do you have to add? So I'm just curious, like, you listen to all these bigger pockets. What made you take action? Like, where was that turning point for you? Because I think a lot of people get stuck and they're like, oh, cool. Here's another way that I can, like, delay having to do anything. I'm just going to listen to <laughs> 600 episodes for, like, two years, you know? So where yeah. did you go? Okay, this is a strategy and I'm going to do it. Yeah, and I just want to add, like, I think I've listened to, like, both of your episodes on Bigger Pockets like, three times. So, uh, one of my favorite ones, for sure, uh, and Craig, I'll, like, give you a shout-out here, but, like, I basically, I was 18, turning 19, so this is August of, fast forward to August of uh, 2020, I was turning 19 that month, I turned uh, 21 this month, and I sold August 30th, and I told myself, all right, in six months, I'm going to buy a property. I don't care if, um, I don't care, like, what goes on, if the market crashes, whoop de whoop de do. Like, I'm going to do all this education, but I have to buy a property by six months. And if I don't, I'm going to go to, like, uh, rent, rent, Bigger Pockets was promoting rent to retirement all the time. I'm going to log on their mm -hmm. website, and I'm going to buy a random property and figure it out. So, like, that's kind of, like, it. I kind of gave myself this arbitrary, like, deadline. And then on top of that, I was also um, reaching out to other people. And I think this is actually part of the biggest thing I did was I was reaching out to other people who were already real estate investors on bigger pockets. So, like, when you start to surround yourself with people who are actually doing it, and then you start to talk to them and listen to them, and then on top of that, you listen to the podcast, you realize if this dude can do it, or if this woman can do it, or if this single mom can do it, or if this poor guy can do it, then I sure as heck can because they, they did it. Right. So you just like get to that kind of moment. I joined Sheets Freaks. Also, I made like this post, like when I turn 30, I want to have $10,000 a month in passive income. It was my very first post on Bigger Pockets. And Dan uh, Sheets, who you guys had on your show, ended up responding. He got me into the group. And then I told everyone in that group my goals. So I was like, hey, guys, I'm buying a property in six months. So now, like, if I don't do it, I look really, really dumb. Um, so I ended up buying a property in five months uh, when I was 19 years old, uh, February last year of 2021, and changed my life. The rest has been history. Man, I got to say that if it doesn't work out as a real estate investor, you should go into like leading sermons because you are so on fire that I'm just like, I, I, I don't know what I'm yeah. doing to run around this house. I'm, I'm, I'm really I'm, fire right now. I'm literally sweating right now. I'm like, I need to run. <laughs> yeah, I need to run right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, man. Yeah. No, yeah. Jabbar. So, what, dude, um, you know, I, I love that you set your goal. And, and, and you'll hear this on Bigger Pockets too, right? They talk about analysis by paralysis and any podcast will talk about that and it's such a real thing because you can listen to 600 episodes and take nine courses and read 150 books but you know so what does it you know we say this all the time on the show education times action equals success if you're 3,000 education and zero action your success is still zero right yeah and so at some point you just got to be like you know i'm ready and i'm, I'm i just like the books aren't going to teach me how to do it like they'll yeah. teach you how to get 89 percent of the way there but you got to do it to get 100 percent of the way there yeah and i'm curious like sheik's freaks so if people don't know it's a community for younger people that are getting into investing whether it's real estate or just like index funds and they're teenagers to like early 20s so did that like make it more believable for you to have people like your age? Because I think sometimes it's hard when like everybody you listen to is like older. Yeah. So uh, what's actually cool is I was the first person in Cheek Freaks to buy a house. So I was like oh. racing to like earn that title too. But I think what okay. helped was just like other people think like I do. Because like I said, like in the military, I'm weird. People like still make fun of me now. Like before it was like I was like, because keep on, I was making $1,500 a month and trying to buy a house uh, to rent out, you know, by the bedroom, like for my first deal, like 
this was something that most people thought it was crazy, especially because I was 19 years old. They're like, you're an idiot. Like everyone would tell me I was going to fail and all this stuff. But then I'd go every Sunday and tell all these guys my age. And they'd be like, heck yeah, man, we can't wait for you to do it. So like that like <laughs> encouragement, it. like definitely helped me, um, like hit my goal because I went through hell. Like I went to th- not, I wouldn't say hell because now it feels like nothing, but it felt like at the time, like now my friends were telling me, no, my parents were kind of like, Hey, you should probably go to school. And then like all the loan officers when I was trying to buy a house were like, dude, like there's no way, like this is not happening. Cause my, you know, I didn't have meet their qualifications. At first. This is what, ha- this is, this is what happens, man. This is exactly what happens when you take a trajectory different from all of those around you. You've been taking advice from all the people that you loved, right? Your, your mom, your dad, I don't know if you've got any brothers or sisters, but your, your, you know, your, your military, your military people, I don't forget what they're called, you know, but like your sergeants <laughs> and your lieutenants or whatever, right? Like you're taking advice from these people your whole life. And all of a sudden you're like, actually I, I see your life. Man, no offense. I don't love it. I want to go this way. And so I'm going to actually go integrate myself in a group of people that are living what I want to do. And I'm going to go listen to them. These a group of strangers that I just met last Tuesday, right? Those are the people that I'm going to listen to because that's the route I want to go. And I think that's super important. And it's really hard to stop listening to your mom and your dad and your grandparents and your brother and sister that you've been listening to your whole life, but you have to do it. I did that too. And it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. And now, you know, I, I'm a few years ahead of you in your in, in the journey, right? But like, they look at me now and they're like, "Oh, I see what you're doing now. Good yep. job, right?" And so yeah. just just be ready to get that good job fist bump when when that time comes. Yeah, and like I tell people like all the time because I mentioned I was Nigerian. They'll like in the culture, it's either you're a lawyer, a doctor, engineer, or disappointment. So like I chose disappointment <laughs> like to my family and it's funny now cuz like before I was like this idiot now I'm like a genius right but they're like he has no morals cuz he's a landlord or he evicts single moms like I like so you never please anybody so like you just have to kind of yeah. blaze your own path and go mm-hmm. for it and have like a bias for action cuz that's really what's going to make the difference in your life it's just really just going for it and you know figure it out it's going to happen and you're going to you're going to thrive or you're going to die and you won't you won't die I love that, man. Ready, <laughs> ready, fire, aim or whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, all right, bro. Let's, let's get into that first deal though. So February, 2021, right? You're 19 mm-hmm. years old and you saying you're by your first deal. Let's, that is your, the for real deal, the deal that makes you a for real investor. And so why don't you tell yeah. us a little bit about that one, man? Like where, where was it? What was the price? How'd you finance it? What'd you do? Give us, give us all the tea. Yeah. So my first deal was in Savannah, Georgia or Fuller, Georgia. It's like a suburb. 10 minutes outside of Savannah. Um, And this is a great deal. I'm super excited to break it down. So um, I found this property on the MLS. It was like this funky house. And what actually got me to like do this was Dan was like, hey man, burr and flipping and all this stuff, because that's what I was wanting to do. It's pretty difficult. Like read this book by my buddy Craig, um, and I'm pretty sure you're going to change your mind on what you want to do. Um, and I don't remember if you remembered it, if you remember this, Craig, but I was like DMing you like weird, like specific questions. I look back at it and never do that <laughs> you're not, again. Bro. You're not the only one, bro. It's okay. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, so I, I realized that like, if I do the burst strategy, um, one, it, it's going to, maybe I might delay my goal of it, like, you know, that six month goal, but also like the opportunity to get like a lot of cash flow from house hacking was there because I was analyzing deals like five deals a day every single day for like three or four months. So like I was just like I saw the numbers worked. But um, anyways, this one was on the MLS. It was a four bedroom, four bathroom home for uh, two fifty five. And um, I had did all the stuff Bigger Pockets tells you to do, like find a real estate agent on Bigger Pockets. Uh, make an offer. She, they wanted two fifty five, and I was like, offer them two thirty five, right? Uh, and obviously that didn't work. My real estate agent was like, what is wrong with you? Uh, but she did it anyways, and then they came back at like two fifty three from like two fifty five, and so like I bartered with them, and I got them down to two forty. Um, but I wanted to, or I said, I was like, all right, 240 with closing costs covered. And they're like, okay, we'll do 240, but we won't cover your closing costs. I was like, all right, fine, 246, but you cover my closing costs. And uh, that was that. 
And then like financing was like the hardest part for me because I was 19 years old at the time. I had exactly six months of credit history. I didn't have like the two years of W-2s. I barely had, like my income was super small. I was making like, uh, I was bringing home $1,500 a month um, and the mortgage payments like 1135. It was a little higher before, but they miscalculated it. And um, I went, I talked to like 19 different banks in total um, just to wow. solidify night financing for this deal. Bank number 13 was the bank that finally told me maybe. And then um, I talked to a few more, came back to bank number 13, and that's who I ended up using. Um, so I used my VA loan on the property. It was 5% down on uh, 246. And that was, that broke down to like $12,300 um, in down payment. And then um, yeah, I, I closed on the deal, and today that property, I, I've moved out that property, but that property nets like $2,000 a month. Um, I wow. did it rent by the bedroom style, so I created like a fifth bedroom, rented out like each individual bedroom, and I Craig Curlocked it, so I slept on a futon in my <laughs> five bedroom, four bathroom house. Hell oh, yeah, dude. Oh my yeah. god. I love, so I feel like I've made it now that my name is a verb. Uh, that's, that's it, dude. That's it. I'm, I'm done. I'm going to, yeah. Um, I have a quick question for you, bro, because you, you okay. mentioned one thing there that, um, that uh, you know, you said you did a VA loan with 5% down. I've never heard mm -hmm. that. I thought VA loan was always 0% down. So it why is. did you do 5% down? Because my lender came back to me and he told me, if you really want to buy this house, you don't qualify for 246, but you do qualify for 233. So if you put 5% mm. down, you can you can buy the house. So that's why okay. I, was, I was all into it for like 22,000 between that and then the VA funding fee and then furniture. And like year one, like I was netting, I, I look back for my tax returns and everything, like $1,500 a month. Um, and then now this year, um, it's been crushing it. I haven't had a single vacancy since I started renting the thing out. So, um, 81% cash on cash return on my first deal. I will take that over like, a, a burr where I had to do all the work and go through all the challenges. Um, it's not just, you know, furnish the house and rent it out by the bedroom. This, this is why house hacking is the best investment strategy <laughs> ever, right? And I'm not even saying because I just wrote the book on it, but like you literally got an 81 percent, like you made $18,000 in your first year in cash flow after yeah. putting down 22000 And that doesn't even include loan pay down appreciation and all the other great things that come with it. And so you're looking at a return on investment well over 100% just in your first year. Right. And that's not even including the 99 years you've got left in your life. And so like, it's just insane. And so I'm so glad that you were able to see that and you're able to like, be like, Hey, I don't need to do this like sexy bird thing. There's probably no sexy before and after pictures with the house hack, right? There's no sexy, like pulling all my money out, blah, blah, blah. but what you get is a nice cash flowing property that's going to cash flow you nicely. And it's, it's, it's minimal work and you can focus on the U S military or whatever, you, whatever you're doing there. <laughs> okay. I just want to hear a little bit about how it was for you to like be sleeping on the futon or the couch or whatever, because do you think that was like weird for the roommates? Like, how did you sell that idea for people to be like, cool with that? Yeah. So like, honestly, I didn't care because the way I looked at it, I was like, Craig is doing this. He's much older than me and he's not in the military. In the military, my alternative was to sleep in the barracks where my roommate pays me no money and his breath stinks. And we're like basically right next to each other when we sleep together. So for me, it didn't mm. matter. Uh, for the roommates, I was just like, hey, like, <laughs> hey, I sleep here. It is what it is. And then another thing is like nine months out of the year, I was either deployed or on training uh, last year. So I wasn't there like for like the full, Much. it was my primary residence, but because of my life, I like don't stay in, you know, this area. Like I'm going somewhere next week. Like, um, so I, yeah. I'm constantly traveling. So I was like, I will put up with this to double my income because now that property literally nets more than what the Marine Corps pays me like every month. So I was like, deal, like I'll take it. And it's gone up a hundred thousand dollars in value. So I was like, Easy, easy choice. Roommates deal with it. <laughs> yeah, and, it, and it's so easy to do that. Like if you're listening to this and you're young and, and you haven't had that luxury of living by yourself and all that, it's so much easier to just live with roommates now versus, you know, live a high lifestyle and then scale back. Especially like in the military. I feel like you military people are like a different different breed. There was one time and I've never, I haven't told the story and I almost forgot about it until you just brought something up to bar that triggered it. 
Uh, I let I let this like it was like a friend of a friend of a friend. He was in the military. He needed a place to stay for one night, and so and this was like back when I was living in California, like way before the house hacking thing. And so I let him like sleep. You know, I made I made a little bed for him on the couch with like a sheet and a blanket, a pillow, like all the comfy stuff. And he comes in. He sleeps the next morning. He's out. He has a little post-it note that says "Thank you," and the bed is like it's exactly how I left it. And I texted him and I was like, dude, like, did you even use this stuff? He's like, no, I just slept on the floor. Didn't use the pillow. Didn't use the blanket. Nothing. Just slept on the floor. And I'm like, you guys are a different breed. Like, <laughs> I don't even know. And so I was like, if that guy can do that, then living behind a food t- like I had a, I had a, we had a cushion, you know, like that's, that's next level. So, uh, yeah, I just thought, yeah. of that. um, but anyway, okay. So, <laughs> so first so property, like someone. Yep. Yeah, first first property man in Georgia. Um, you know, it's it's cash flowing you two thousand. You're doing rent by the room, living like you're you're just trying to get as much as you can out of that property to get to that goal of financial independence as quickly as you can. And so, what is I guess what happens after that? Like, you know, I guess a question about how did you find your tenants with rent by the room? That's a question I get a lot. Yeah, and I I get that question a lot too. And like honestly, it's pretty easy. It's like Facebook Marketplace. Facebook groups and then roomie.com, roomies.com. I find like, I like never, I always have tons of people like hitting me up and and the type of tenants I have are like other military. I've had a chemical engineer, a mechanical engineer working for a private jet company. Like people were making six figures, but are willing to pay $850 to rent a bedroom uh, when a one bedroom's fifteen hundred dollars or you know twelve hundred dollars, whatever it is. So um, Facebook Marketplace, um, Roomies, and fa- in uh, Facebook groups is how I find tenants. And really, Roomies, Roomies right. dot com. I find high quality people on there. Yeah, this is definitely how we do it cool. too. Cool, man. All right, man. So let's. Uh, so February two thousand twenty one, you bought that first one. I suspect. Did you just stay there for a year, or were you? What, what were you doing, kind of right after that? Yeah, so I stayed in that property. I also bought a cabin. So um, I told you guys like the stock. I had like twenty five grand, but I spent like twenty two grand <laughs> on on that first deal in total. So I essentially basically had no money, and I was like, man, like how are these guys scaling and stuff like that? So I was like, I want to buy another property, and that's when like I was in the field. Um, trying to get my property rented out like halfway across the country, like managing it myself. And I met, I was kind of struggling at first because um, like everything was wrong. My ad was wacky. My price was too high. I was just not doing it the right way. And I figured it out. But one person I met while I was in the field, he was telling me about this whole Airbnb short to rental thing. And I was like, huh, like that sounds like awesome. Um, what, how, like, how are you doing? And you know, once you start talking to real estate investors, they really love talking about themselves. So, you know, the guy just starts <laughs> giving me like a, a crash course on his portfolio and how well he was doing. And he had, at the, he has six cabins now that do uh, $300,000 or last year they did $300,000 in pure cash flow in the Great Smoky Mountains. And he was like, yeah, one cabin he bought for like 500,000 and he's netting, like this is net, not gross, netting $50,000 a year on, on one property. So I was like, that's insane. I want to do that too. And so I was like, well, I'm gonna buy a, a Smoky Mountains cabin, I guess. And so keep in mind, I had no money, um, no experience renting short term rentals or anything like that. So did that whole crash course. That's why I listened to your a podcast, Yana, on Bigger Pockets. I love it. Talking about it and Avery's and stuff. So I did all the learning and I was like, hmm, I don't have any money. I don't really have like the income to qualify for the loan. But, you know, if I can find a good deal, if I can find a really good opportunity, I can, you know, get somebody else to put somebody else on it. Um, so I went down that whole process, eventually um, found somebody after tons of rejection, telling everyone I was a real estate investor and I, I want to buy this cabin. And I found somebody who guaranteed the debt, bought the property, and then we split the deal, equity and cash flow, 50-50 um, in the Great Smoky Mountain. Awesome. And that was like a $600,000 cabin. And so keep in mind, like, for going from like having this $246,000 property to a $600,000 property on my same income was such a big jump for me. But like, because like I figured out um, how can I, you know, buy this cabin without my own, without having the money, it like just started unlocking my mind into like, you know, how I can really start scaling uh, more and becoming like a 
big time real estate investor. Wow. That, I mean, whew, that is like a huge jump. I, I know for me personally is every time I like stretch myself to buy something a little more expensive, it's like, it's really scary kind of, you know? Yeah. But um, tell us, like, break down that deal for us. So you told us the price, how much is the mortgage, how is it doing, and and all that stuff. Yeah. So I haven't had that property for a full year yet, but I can kind of give you, like, an idea. So I paid, it was $600,000 in the Smokies. It's the mortgage payments like three grand, and I estimated that it was going to do like ninety thousand dollars in gross revenue. I think it will be more like eighty, eighty thousand dollars in gross revenue. Like some months is great. Like last month we did twelve thousand dollars and netted six grand. Like this next this month we are doing like uh, six thousand dollars in gross revenue and will maybe net like a grand or two. So it kind of like varies a lot. That's a lot. Um, but it's probably like, honestly, even it's maybe we'll probably end up at like a 20% cash to cash return, which is um, okay, maybe. Um, Still good. But it's probably like my worst performing asset because the deals that I just bought pretty recently are, I mean, I'm, I'm not finished stabilizing them, but, <laughs> but they're really good deals. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I want to hear about That's those. Awesome. Yeah. So I guess real quick on the partnership side. So so you're just doing a typical 50-50, right? So it sounds like you yep. put 20% down. So he came in with 120 to 150 after furnishings and all that. And and then you just put everything oh, on 50 yeah. Is that right? That, that's so, so no, no, <laughs> Yeah. No, no dollars out of your pocket, though, right? Which I think is the important thing. Yeah. So um, to more on like the logistics side, and I didn't want to go super deep into it, but I can. Um, so we leverage the 10% down vacation home loan. So we're following right. all like the mortgage obligations with the property, which states we have to stay in it uh, for like two weeks. And then the rest of the time, you're actually able to rent it out as a short term rental. So basically what uh, we did, we actually put only 10% down and um Actually, I was the person who brought that 10% down because I got the money from another investor. So I'm paying him an interest rate on his money. And then like the partner, he bought the property, but then I gave him the money back afterwards. That's why he did it with like a 19 year old kid he met in a random Slack group is because mm. his <laughs> risk was super low. Um, yeah. So like, I think I, we pay him like, three or four hundred dollars a month and we have like five years to pay him back and then the exit on that like we could pay like the cabin has appreciated a hundred thousand dollars maybe less with the market going down and uh we could pay him back by a sale we could pay him back by a refinance or i could just pay him back or we could just pay him back out of the cash flow so have several different exit strategies for that but that's basically how the deal was broken down uh to answer your question you're correct Okay, okay, perfect. Yeah, I always think that's interesting because there's so many different ways to approach investors. And again, someone who doesn't have a lot of people listening to this have that drive but don't have that money. So you just got to find somebody with the money and putting yourself in those groups is how you do it. So, yep. Z. Great. So I, I just want to hear about these next investments because it sounds like I, like you're doing all the right things, right? You did the house hack, which is where we say to start for everybody. Like, I think that's such a great move. And then you did the next sexy thing, which is like Avery Carl, Smoky Mountains, people just like, you know, they talk about that a lot. And that's actually not your best performing thing. So I'm like, what is going to be your famous thing that we're all going to be like, oh, we want to be like Jabbar and we're going to go get this next deal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like um, I did it. I, so like after I bought the cabin, I was just learning how to be a, um, you know, because short term rentals. Whatever anybody says, it is not passive income. It, that thing oh, is a business. No. Yeah, like <laughs> people think, oh, you just put the cabin on Airbnb and it rents out. No, there's tons of marketing strategies and different things that you have to do to really stand out. And now it's even gotten more competitive, especially where we're seeing a mm -hmm. lot of like listings come online. And so you have to really, you know, pivot and differentiate yourself and things like that. So um, I, I actually love short-term rentals, though, because it's fun. It's still sexy. It wakes me up in the morning and get excited. So that's kind of where I'm focusing on now. So my next deal, I was on deployment. So I was just in Norway. And while I was in Norway, I'm, like, putting offers on everything, right? Like, because I have the strategy because I have tons of people who are like, hey, we would love to do 
what um, you know you did in the past, which is we buy it and we split 50-50, but this time I don't have to give them any money. Like they're the ones who are putting up all the money and then we split 50-50 afterwards because now I have a track record. And before like I, yeah. I go like into what I've actually done, I just want to say this for your audience is like that's the thing. Like when you're doing like your deal one through like maybe 10, they really honestly don't matter because all it's doing is building your track record as like a real estate investor. It's kind of like a, a resume for you because if you plan on ever raising money or partnering with people or just building that uh, skill set, uh, Brandon Turner calls it being like a lion killer, like the goats, like your go to thing, what you're really, really good at. Um, it just comes from like the experience of doing multiple deals. Um, so my next deal I found while I was in Norway, it just came from a relationship. So this is my first off market deal. So I, one thing I didn't tell you guys I do and, or your audience I do is I constantly am out there networking. I'm constantly going to events. And so I had this one investor who like I knew he was. Um, I saw that he sold one of his properties and then he had this duplex that I really wish I would have bought. So I was like, hmm, let me just call this guy and see if he's interested in selling. So I started like blowing him up. Like every two weeks, I'll just follow up with him, follow up with him, follow up with him. Like, hey man, you interested in stuff? Hey, how are you doing? How I heard you, you know, have a new girlfriend or whatever. And um, so I was talking to him and finally he agreed to sell while I was in Norway. And so I was like, great, awesome, like, let's let's make this deal happen. And then when I ran the numbers, like, at the new interest rate and everything, I was like, eh, I, I like, I really just want a 30% cash on cash return because I know they exist. So um, the way that I handled that is I said, hey, man, like, this deal only works for me if you allow me to take over your mortgage. And so I, I like basically it's subject to. So I basically explained to him what subject to was, like the framework, because I didn't really know 100% what it was, and kind of like, <laughs> and kind of like navigated him through what I was thinking. And I was like, we'll get an attorney, we'll be official. This is how we can structure it to be a win-win. And to my surprise, because I was really just trying to practice pitching it, pitching terms, he said, yeah. So um, basically with that deal, it was a duplex in Beaufort, South Carolina. Um, he had like a 2% interest rate on it, something stupid. And um, he owes 200 on it. Um, I'm paying him 210, but I don't pay him 210 or two, sorry, 280 for 10 years. So for the time being, for years one to uh, the next 10 years, I'm literally just paying this dude's mortgage payment. This $1,200, 2% interest a uh, mortgage payment, and then I have like a 70k balloon um, 10 years from now, and the property will definitely appreciate um, the property. <laughs> I could sell it, I could do a lease option, like there's so many different exit strategies. And so, what I like this deal a lot is because he has a $1,250 payment, but gross rents as a long term rental are like 30, 3,800, 3,700, 3,800 on a $1,200 mortgage payment. And then on as a short term rental, I believe I can get greater than five thousand dollars in gross rents. So like this is a killer deal because I put no money down. I'm literally just furnishing the place and it's going to print money like I'm literally getting it, on, it online like right now. So whew, that, that, I'm so excited. <laughs> 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 oh man well that's awesome why did the guy sell because it sounds like he was doing great with it yeah so he wasn't he this is the he is not meant to be a landlord this is probably the most yeah. irresponsible person i've ever met in my life so his background is he actually oh i should not do this he was discharged from the military for not meeting uh, the requirements of uh, being in shape and things like that. And then he was absentee, so he moved to Texas. The property's in South Carolina. So when I went to finally see the property, when I got back from Norway, the grass was like this high. I met up with the tenant and she just rolled her eyes. She was like, he doesn't fix anything. Uh, like she, he doesn't respond to messages. Like <laughs> she's paying, uh -huh. like she was like paying when she wanted to. That's another thing, which which wasn't is not cool. Is she was she was paying whenever she wanted to pay because the guy wasn't keeping track of it. He was doing Airbnb on the one side, but it was probably like the worst Airbnb I've ever seen in my life. So he and then he was having a baby, so he just he just wanted to be done with it because it was just yeah. like responsibility that he he should not have been handling. 
<laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it sounds like you inherited a problem, right? And problems yeah. tend to be very, very profitable. Like if someone is, is like, if this thing's just a pain in the butt, he probably has some, you know, some ghosts in the closet from him. He's just like, it's haunting him. He does not want that deal anymore. And so that's how you pick great deals is find people that have problems or that, that, it, that it's heavy for them and you lift it off of them. And then you can pay the difference. So yeah, I think that's exactly. it. I think that's great. Awesome, man. Well, so is that is that is that your portfolio to date? Is you've got that house hack um, in, in Savannah, Georgia. You've got the Smoky Mountains Airbnb, and then you've got this ones in South Carolina. Yeah, and then I also I'm a house hacker times two. Um, I did another <laughs> house hack um, in Savannah, Georgia, and that one is probably going to be one of my most favorite deals. Um, I could tell I could tell you guys about that one if you guys have time. We have like, let's give us like the two minute, the two minute version. Okay. Quick yeah. right now. Uh, found this deal, basically relationships. The real estate agent, Chelsea Phillips, she's the best real estate agent in Savannah. Instead of like taking a commission on this thing, one of my friends was going to sell it on market with her and she probably would have sold it for 800. But she said, Hey, I know you've been looking for a quadplex. Well, here, what, like Curtis is trying to sell it. So she just put us together. Like she played the connector role. And then um, I bought it from, from Curtis for um, $695,000. And so the fourth unit needs renovation. So right now um, there's tenants in there. They move out the end of the month. But the awesome thing is this thing is going to be a smacking short-term rental. So like just with like three <sighs> units, like with me living in the property, like I'm probably going to do like eleven or like eleven thousand dollars in gross rent on like a forty five hundred dollar mortgage payment. Like long term wow. rents once I move out are like sixty nine hundred in total. So and then on top of that, I'm renovating this fourth unit. Once I finish renovating this fourth unit, which will cost me um, sixty, sixty, seventy, maybe eighty thousand dollars with all the furnishing and stuff like that, the property will be worth over a million dollars. So now wow. I'm like forcing um, equity and appreciation that I'm going to be able to borrow against to do more deals. So um, this is these deals like collectively will give me financial freedom. Um, literally. <laughs> As a 20 year old, like it, it's insane because I told you guys that goal I, I put in bigger pockets. Like, I wanted to have ten thousand dollars a month in um net or passive income by 30, and now, like, this year, I'm gonna be at ten thousand dollars a month in uh, I, I, it's not passive, so I won't call it passive income, but net rental income potentially, you know. Like, right now, <laughs> like, two, like, two, less than two years later. So, it just really it's blowing my mind, like, just the power of real estate investing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have the same thing happen to me where, you know, I was 26 and I had the goal of 30. I was going to retire by 30 and I had no idea how I was going to make it happen. And Airbnb allowed me to do it in two years. And so, you know, I'm not like surprised to see that. It's like sometimes when you just set a goal, you can get there like way faster than you expect. But my question is about regulations, because I know Savannah has some tight regulations. What have yeah. you been doing or have you just picked the right markets where you're kind of outside of the city enough that it doesn't matter? Yeah, no. So I'm in the most regulated part of the city. It, it's horrible. But so the rule in Savannah is it just has to be commercially zoned or it has to have an existing permit prior to 2018. So this property is commercially zoned. So oh, perfect. to do short term rentals. And if you own or occupy, you're also able to do um, short term rentals in Savannah. So like it's just like a double whammy there. Just finding being in that perfect. market. But, you know, once you go over the humps of regulation, um, you've hit like a, a jackpot. <laughs> Love it. All right, man. Yeah. So, so it sounds like dude, you're you're on you're well on your way, right? You're already around ten thousand dollars a month. I mean, you you got you can retire before you can drink. So, I think that's a pretty cool thing to say. But one thing I want to ask you because right you know right now it just seems like everything is unicorns and rainbows and everything you seem to touch yeah. turns to gold, right? What are, what are some things like? Give us like a, I know you've probably suffered through some pain in this in this journey. So so give us like your top pain point just so we don't paint an unrealistic picture for people. Just yeah. Down. And I apologize for that. I didn't mean to make it like a highlight reel. No, um, no, no. I mean that's what it's about, bro. But 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 we know, man. We're we're experienced here. We know there's some. We know there's some lows. Yeah, I mean, like for me, it's just like mistakes, right? So like, um, for, even with this quadplex, like I knew better than I closed on like the 
I, I basically I closed on like the first or the 29th instead of the first, which made my mortgage payment like a month earlier. Think you know, but and so that's like four thousand dollars in just unexpected expenses already because I was planning to have two months of unexpected expenses, and now I'm like self funding the deal or just like things with um, Airbnb guests, like my cabin. The reason why, like I said, the number is going to be lower is because a big mistake I made is like a guest. Um, peed all over my carpet and ruined it. Their dog like oh scratched it up. So like, a human it cost me no. Oh, sorry. Their dog. Their dog peed. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I was like, dang. Yeah, that's so yeah. yeah. So that was like um, forty five hundred because I had to replace all the carpets now because they smelled like dog piss and they were all scratched up. And so that was that sucked. And then I couldn't go after the guest. So I had to uh, refund the next guest because I couldn't get done in time. So I was like six grand. And it's just like uh, it feels like I constantly bleed money, honestly, because <laughs> every month there's something Sometimes. Every month with the different properties or something like with this house. I brought I bought just now like um the foundation is kind of wonky. So like I'm going to I know that sometime down the line, I'm going to have to spend like 20 or $30,000 on the foundation. And that's on the duplex that I got with nothing down. Right. But I know that maybe year two or three, I'm going to have a 30000 or $20,000 capital expenditure that I'll be prepared for. So it's just like stuff like that of due diligence or just things that you couldn't even think of. Like I make a lot of mistakes. And like, I don't, um, I'm grateful for them cause I'm learning, but it's just part of the game. It's like, you figure it out. And that's why, like, I try and like share different exit strategies to show that I always have a plan. Like worst case scenario, I start knocking on investors doors. And I'm like, Hey man, I don't have 10 grand, but this AC needs 10 grand. Um, come in with the 10 grand and take 50% or something like that. Or, you know, it's just things, like, things can happen. Yeah, and yeah. real estate is so forgiving too. I think that's the best part about it is that you could have a twenty grand expense, but the property will probably have appreciated a hundred grand. And so, you know, you're you're kind of like, you know what? Like, I'll give you twenty grand. Thanks for the hundred. You know, <laughs> like that's kind of how I view in the expenditures that I have that were unforeseen. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right, so we should move into the final part of our show. Yes. Do you have any final words of wisdom before we do that? Yeah, I would just say like the biggest thing that I did is like being in Sheik's Freaks honestly helped me a lot because I start because people in Sheik's Freaks have properties now. Like I'm definitely not the only yeah. one, but it's just surrounding yourself with other people who are doing it. So now like I just try and get into rooms where I feel tiny, you know, because I have eight doors now, but like there's people with 800 doors, 8,000 doors. And, um, it's not the most important thing, but it's just like if you want to go bigger, you have to be around bigger. So that average of the last the the five people that you spend the most time with is true. Because I have friends who, when they were twenty, they bought 140 units. You know, <laughs> so it's definitely um, important to surround yourself with like-minded individuals. Yeah, and if you and if you are interested in joining the Sheik's Freaks, go to sheiksfreaks.com. It's S H E E K S freaks.com. We have an absolutely no affiliation with them, um, other than uh, Dan is a really good friend of mine. Uh, just some background on Dan. He's he's a high school teacher. He's been on our podcast twice actually, and um, he just he 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 thrives and just like gets so much energy from helping young people achieve financial independence. And again, a wonderful guy. So go check it out. Yeah. Awesome. Well, let's head into. The final four. Kick us off, All right. Yes. So, Jabbar, question number one. What are you reading right now? Is there anything left to read or have you read it all? <laughs> no. My, my book reading list gives me anxiety because people tell me to read a uh, book. And I'm like, dude, I, I'm literally driving. But I'm reading uh, a $100 million offer right now mm. by Alex Hermosi. And I'm probably going to have to read it again when I'm at that level because it's, it's so good. It's like business in like a, a compact tactical potion. It, it fires me up. But there's lots of good info in there. I just finished that one as well. Really good book. Yeah. yeah. Um, all right, Jamar, what is the best piece of advice you've ever received? I knew this question was coming. Um, I... <sighs> I would cop out, buy real estate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm to buy real estate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, because, like, when I think of my trajectory, um, no way in heck I could have gotten here with anything else that I was going to be doing before. And when I look at where I'm heading now, it's just 
another level. So it's just like, get, I guess it's like take action ASAP, figure it out, you know, fire ready aim or whatever it is, build your parachute on the way down. Uh, that's the best advice I've ever get, got. Like, just take action. You don't need to know everything. Mm, love that. All right. Question number three, what is your why? Um, I would say for me, it's really important. So I didn't go into this, but in my background, and it's going to sound really artificial, I was like abused as a kid. So like when I was 15, I actually got taken away from my household by Child Protective Services. And like growing up, mm. I was also to, always told I was a loser. I was going to amount to nothing. I was going to be nothing. I was going to be a deadbeat father. And so like really, it's not being that person, but being like the man that God like put me on earth to be. So like I, I pray about it every morning, like in my lifetime, I want to help a billion people. Like, I don't know what that mm. looks like and I don't really care what that looks like, but I just know that I want to help as many people as possible. And I believe that um, like kind of like the more wealth that you create, the more you're able to just pour that into things that you believe in and give to other people. So it's, for me, it's like, how can I be like just an impactful person that leaves a lot of legacy? And that's what sounds awesome in my head right now. So that's, that's kind of what wow. like my why is. Hey guys, if you're thinking about becoming a real estate agent like us, um, you might wanna go to Kaplan. That's where I got my license and I found that they made all this really dull information actually kind of interesting um, and very memorable. So if you're looking at getting your license, see if they have your state. They cover a lot of states, but not all of them. And if you want to get a little discount, use our code INVEST2. So the word invest in the number two. Thanks, guys. Dang, I, love dude, that. I love that, man. I love that. I love that <laughs> bomb, drum, dr the bomb drop right there. Like that. That's like that's a real <laughs> that's like a full real why for sure. Like, you know, and, and to see like where you've come in five years, right? And you're 15, you were five, that was five years ago, right? That That's not that long ago for a lot of people. And to see where you're at now, dude. Unreal, unreal. So you should give yourself some. I know I know you like it's easy to get caught and look at looking ahead. But if you've read the gap in the game, which you probably have, like yeah. always take some time to look back as well and see how far you've come. Cause like, that's just insane trajectory, bro. Um, Thank you. all right, man, hard to follow up that question. But, uh, number four, what is something that everyone looks stupid doing? Everyone looks stupid doing. Wow. Um, I, I guess maybe swimming or I will not <laughs> look stupid swimming. I guess like being in an unnatural state. I don't know. I'm sorry. This is hard. Yeah. Um, That's a hard one. Yeah. I guess like, dang, because I always think like, well, someone else good at that. Like I wanted to stay singing. I wanted to stay swimming. I went, like, because I look pretty stupid trying to swim and sing. Uh, I mean, you can say, it's, I mean, you do it I mean, if you're doing it at the same time, yeah. like, there you go. Let's yeah. go with that. Swimming yeah. and singing at the same time. Same time. You'll try it. You'll probably yeah. look like an idiot. <laughs> yeah, I would agree. I would agree. Awesome, brother. And where can people find out more about you? Yeah. Um, so I am getting active on, active on Instagram. So um, Jabbar, uh, J-A-B-B-A-R underscore investor. So instead of investor, investor. Just came up with it on the fly. And then, um, yeah, that's it. Jabbar, I decided on Bigger Pockets, Facebook, probably LinkedIn. Um, those are my go-tos. Awesome, man. Yeah, okay. definitely hit up Jabbar with any questions and yeah, he's crushing it for someone. I mean, you're crushing it for someone. So at, you know, at your age, but of course, your background and all that good stuff too. So um, awesome, man. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks so much for spreading your knowledge. And this will help you reach your goal of impacting a billion people. So make sure you add that to your tally. Yeah, thank you. All right, man. We'll see you soon. Yep. And that was Jabbar A. I cannot say his last name. I tried. Uh, Adisada? I Adisada? Adisada? I something. Adisada. I don't know. I, it's easier when I can see it. Now I can't see it anymore. So yeah, that's what we're going to go with. It's all good. Yeah. You know who we're talking about. There's only one. He's, he's the Jabbar. Jabbar Investar. The Jabbar. Is the Jabbar yeah. Investar. Uh, and what do you think of Jabbar? Oh, man. This is one of my favorites, actually. It's just like so fun. I love his energy. I love how he really wants to just give back to so many people. Um, yeah, I love that his story has to do a lot with like not fitting in and then being okay with that and really just like blazing his own path. 
Yeah, I love, um, I, I just love his story. Um, I love hearing about where he came from and where he is now. It's such a short period of time. And he kind of like unlocked the anything's possible and just go full and straight, like going straight on towards that, right? Like he's, he's full-time military. He's, he's got investors. He's, he's got $10,000 of passive income, but he can't buy a beer. And, uh, you know, I think it's crazy to just think about like where he's at and where he'll be in just like five years from now, right? When he's 25. Uh, and so, you know, it, definitely like if you're going to reach out to somebody, I would say like Jabbar is probably the person you want to follow and reach out to because he's still so young. If you're still young and just starting out, he's the person that's going to be the most relatable, that one of the most relatable guests definitely go hit him up and he's such a nice guy and if you ever need some stimulation and some energy like he's, he's got plenty of it to share absolutely well guys um what can we offer you this week i would say that if you are looking to invest in real estate anywhere in the u.s please reach out to us because we can connect you with our network of investor friendly agents and we would love to help you get going um and then also if you can leave us a rating or review we would love that share our podcast with somebody you know and like this is such a great inspiring episode so this would be a great one to share yeah definitely share this with everybody and yeah hit up jabbar hit up us on instagram uh, i'm the fi guy and ziana is ziana mcintyre womp, womp, womp. all right <laughs> we'll see you guys all next week that's it for this episode of Investify. We hope that these nuggets of real estate wisdom lead to more savvy financial planning and a clearer path towards financial freedom. For more content like this, subscribe to the show at investify.com. Don't forget to leave a rating and share it with your friends. Together, we can transform more real estate newbies into successful and clever investors. Thank you so much for listening. See you on the next one.